Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tia Boo, and I am here for Super Dimension Fortress Macross, episode 28. Last time on Macross, we finished everything. The world was destroyed. Our primary threat in the form of an enormous Zentradi fleet was destroyed, along with its leader. Our primary romantic love triangle was settled. In no uncertain terms, Minmei goes off to do whatever the hell with Kaifun, and we get to chill with Hayase on a new planet. And I have no idea what we're going to do next, because I have no idea what we can do next. Truly, it feels to me like all of the threads that have been presented by the story have been wrapped. So we're going to have to present new threads or go in a direction that I don't expect. And I'm excited for this, but I'm also really nervous, because, well... It could really drag, and if you end your story and then drag your story out for eight more episodes, that can really leave a mediocre taste in your mouth. And I really don't want a mediocre taste of Macross in my mouth. It's been really good. So I'm hoping that they've got some interesting tricks up their sleeves. Let me throw out a few bad ideas. Bad idea number one, eight episodes of Slice of Life Rebuilding the World. Bad idea number two, eight episodes of purely pornographic repopulating the world. Just all our characters you know and love, bang, banging. Not gonna happen. Bad idea number three, there's a proto-proto-culture, like an ancienter, older, more evil species that from whence all of us are descended, and they return to the galaxy because we all recombined or something. Idea number, how many am I at now? Four? Whatever. Uh, I have no idea. None. So I'm just going to leave it be, and we'll watch the episode, and I guess hold off judgment until we see what we're going to do here, and where it's going to go. Because this cast of characters, I would watch in bottle episodes for the next eight episodes, if they were interesting, and if the animation was a little bit up to par. And... I'd, I'd enjoy that because the banter and the back and forth between these characters is lovely and the cast is cool and the universe is cool. Just feels like we've finished all the main quests and I need a new quest flag to ping up to make this interesting. We'll see what the show does. Again, both excited and nervous. And again, I want to draw Minmei at the front of a ship, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, alright. So, I could just imitate the the scene that we got in the show with the with the macross plunging forward but i don't want to i've had this idea for for so long now that it feels feels right to try to make it manifest a little bit Hmm. Yeah, I am going to change that. In the scene where she's singing, um, she has her, her legs, like, pressed together, and it's much more, much more demure or, like, effeminate than what I was drawing before. So I feel like that works better for our purpose. Planks of the ship, cresting waves... Shall pylon, shall pylon, shall pylon. Yeah, I like that better. I like her with her arm, her arm in the air, singing. Yeah. It also makes the the legs together sort of make sense as well because it feels a little more dancey. Yeah, that's that's what's up. I'm happy with that. In May at the bow of a ship, more metaphorical than the one we saw before. But she is the figurehead. Cool. Well, with the remaining Zentradi and the surviving humans united in purpose, or at least in species? <laughs> in love, perhaps? We head into a mysterious future. No idea what we're going to do now. 
really curious to see what the what the damage is everywhere and how our characters reconcile with that. But as is, there's nothing else to say and nothing else to do but to dive into the next episode of Super Dimension Fortress Macross. So here's episode 28, Beep Beep Timer. Not so blue anymore, mostly blackened and <laughs> on fire. <laughs> that bombardment scene was so fucking crazy. <sighs> Post nuclear annihilation world. Cool. Not starting with a recap. What the fuck? <laughs> Guys! You just time skipped two years? My album? Min May's album? We just time. <laughs> Alright, we're done. <laughs> That makes sense. All our relationships have just been on standby? Or are they fucking married? <laughs> oh. Little patch of flowers. Gonna take them back to the cutie patootie? Kill them. <laughs> take them with you for your own pleasure. <laughs> Oh, it's a full field! Is this fire punch? <laughs> Time skip into... <laughs> what? Oh! That was Roy? Oh! And that's the Nostalgia Earth song, right? So far, the art in this episode is really, really crispy. The animation and movement is a little shaky, but the art is really crispy. Hmm. They know him well. Hmm. Ah, oh, so now we start those issues? 
Hmm. No war. Not enough war. All right, let's bring back the games. <laughs> they have to build things. I hope we're not enslaving the Zentradi. That would be real bad. Ah, uh, that distinction too. That's probably what makes them stir up trouble with us humans. Sides. Set them across? Oh my god, it got toasted. But a city builds up around it, that makes sense. Oh wow. That's dope. That's really dope. <laughs> wow, we're doing great! Those Zentradi sure are industrious. We've even set up a cable car. That makes sense. And everybody lives in a trailer park. Is that a high essay? That's a high essay! Hmm. My album. That's gotta be really- you keeping up the posters and shit too? My guy. Uh, honestly, you gotta- you gotta get rid of that stuff if you're gonna enter into a committed relationship with another woman. This is not good. <laughs> that is not good, Hikaru. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I hate it. My guy! For real. <laughs> for real, for real. You gotta talk that through. You gotta talk that through. It's gonna turn into endless bitterness, yo. Is she leaving, leaving? Key in the mailbox? <laughs> oh! Took two years? Took two years of that shit sitting there to get there? What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, I didn't want this. I didn't want the, the love triangle to be re-emerging. That's bad. How about your wife? I'm, uh, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah? So he just goes, no, I haven't gotten another woman? Bro, is Hayase, she's what, sliced ham? Oh, he's gonna go back for her. Or did he just have- I, I'm unclear, did he just have a revelation that he loves Minmei? Or is he going back for Hayase with flowers in hand? Oh, blows all the dandelions up. New seeds. That's not a good idea, bro. That's not a good idea. Just surrounded by- Cool. He's gonna find out that she's broken up with Kaifun.
Motherfucker. <laughs> Refuse- What the fuck? Really? Who let him stay alive? <laughs> Okay, it's g gorgeous. She even sounds more professional. Dereliction of duty. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Why does that feel sinister to me? I don't know. Just gonna peace out and see a girl. What about the girl you left at home? We solved everything! <laughs> oh my gosh, that's Grande City? <sighs> oh, that's awesome. The song she's singing is literally about giving up on you, bro. It's all good, bro. I wonder how her life has been going. <laughs> uh. You had- you really should have talked about that. You gotta- gotta communicate. Ah! 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 Oh. Oh. You gotta take a good thing and throw it- throw it in the trash. Please stop. <laughs> Please stop. I can't escape. <sighs> Fuck. This is a great way to go with it. The most deeply interpret. Whoa! That tracks. He's losing it. She's matured. Kaifun, have you... Have you added shitty manager to your list of bad character tropes? You fucking leech. You fucking leech, you wouldn't have anything without her. <clears throat> no. Maybe it's the drink. <laughs> what? 
What a pathetic shit. What? <laughs> Where did you get another bottle? <laughs> Well, there's Entrati. Well, there's Entrati. Okay, so we're, we're angling for a min May collides into Hikaru? Well, hey, I've got a plane. Let's go, min May. Tell that fuck off. <laughs> ah! Maybe we shouldn't treat them like second-class citizens. So we're gonna get pulled away from it and not be able to talk- Oh my god, she was right there! Oh! Yeah, you be sad. You be sad. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yellow phone. Okay, okay, okay. Service. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, cool. Wow, they're full rampaging. Guys. Guys, this isn't gonna help your situation. This is bad. I didn't think this could work, and it's working so well. Oh, I just wish that the romance didn't have to re-emerge. I'm so set with Hayase, I was fine with that. In the nick of time? Eh? Cool to be fighting planet side. No, please don't explode. Oh shit, we're still. She's still our comms officer. Oh, so we have to banter in a. Fuck. You gotta communicate, Hayase. You, you gotta. I don't think that's the problem. I really don't think that's the issue. Putting you aside for the moment. <laughs> Shabby. <laughs> a little bit. A, li a little bit. <laughs> Yada! Oh my god, the fraught relationship that you're forced to engage with because of military is rough. Cocky? Trying not to get his, his men killed. Sorry, if you've already gone to murder and terrorism, it's- it's ogre. 
So he's going for non-lethal kills. That's good, we'll be able to get information. Yeah, he's going for the legs. Pretty familiar. God, jeez. Okay, I thought we were going to have a, a moment of deciding whether we were going to shoot down those unarmed people. Oh, this is rough. What a complicated story to get involved into. I'm really into it. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that doesn't help. That doesn't help. Yeah, I saw her get in a horrible fight with- Oh shit, that's a breakup letter. God fucking damn it. <laughs> what the shit, ISA? Oh, pictures for your album. Well, that's not a breakup le- Oh! If only you could communicate your heart, ISA. You're such a sweet lady. She just wants to be admired and adored. And for good reason, you're, like, obsessed with this other woman. Hmm. So now you're gonna separate and isolate them? I understand the premise, but... Yo, she's just stuck in the middle of nowhere. Maybe you shouldn't have broken it off. <laughs> Finally gonna figure this shit out? No. <laughs> ah. Oh, I did not expect to have my heart <laughs> stomped on over the course of this episode. Oh, what a choice. What a choice to take to take all the stability and and eliminate. You know, you know what it is? It's you get to the end of the fairy tale and Cinderella and the prince find each other and then it just goes happily ever after. And then we cut back a year later and it's like, well, actually, it's a little more complicated than that. And the happily ever after wasn't so happy and wasn't so ever after because that's not how relationships work and it's not how people are. To take the complicated love triangle that we had and re-complicate it by having it become solidified and then fall apart on both sides both characters who found their place right she found her kaifun and he found his found his hayase both sides fall apart and so we emerge into a world where everything's possible again but it's all wrapped up and tangled and fraught with everything that's happened before Oh, it actually makes me, um, uh, nervous. It, like, I, f I feel the tension in my body, 
like my chest feels tight and um my my spine feels tingly and weird it's like that sort of tension when you get called to the principal's office or when a parent is like hey buddy we're gonna talk about this when you get home it's like something is like ugh, something bad is is gonna happen or gross or wrong or or twisted or painful Oh, and then so many elements of the episode work together so well it's almost almost the whole thing is like set to minmay soundtrack songs the whole sequence where he's looking at the the first the the plants and stuff is set to i think beautiful place in my heart the nostalgic track and it's all this earth nostalgia and history and past linked into it and and thinking and thought linked into it and then oh Hayase going through this photo album is absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. Especially when we get this, like, wholehearted, loving, dedicated side that's very much fitting into the role of, like, housewife, which doesn't, to me, Hayase is not a housewife, but I could see it, right? And it's like, I even maybe want it for her because she seems to have wanted something like it for herself. And it's good, and she's joking about it and thinking about Hikaru, and he's on her mind. And he, she goes into his room to clean it up. And she's seen these things before, like, certainly, but it finally sinks in. Some things never change as she's looking at the, the dirty clothing. But next to his bedside, the bro keeps a photo album entirely filled with pictures of his ex. Who he never even dated, like his high school crush. Imagine, right? You're in a two-year-long relationship after the end of the world, and at your bedside, you keep a photo album of your high school sweetheart crush who never you never dated, and you've always had this thing that was like, oh, if only there were a chance. Yeah, that's a way to make your current significant other feel really um, loved and appreciated. Oh my god, what garbage boyfriending from Hikaru. What garbage. So to me, that means his heart hasn't been in it. Or he's fucking stupid. Right? Like, is is he just fucking stupid? Is that really it? He really cares about Hayase? And, uh, is just dumb enough to think that this is alright? I don't think so. I think she's right, that her, his heart has never put Minmay away. He's never been able to seal that off. I thought that that scene where we said everything back and forth was it. He made the choice on his own, you know? Brutal. Some siren songs can't be so easily forgotten. Brutal. And there are even like some pinup shots and some some sexier things, and he, it's a bad move. It's a bad look, man. Pure cuteness, and finally one with them together. No pictures of Hayase. And while he's out, you know, I, I I he goes and he sits and he he pulls these flowers, and has all this n nostalgic time out here, but he doesn't go. Wow, beautiful flowers! I can't wait to bring these back to my love, the love of my life. Misa Lisa Hayase. No. He doesn't think anything but about the destruction and the loss. And then he gets back in his plane and there's Minmei singing. And with her with her in his ears, he hears that she's in Grante City and decides to head over there. Just innocently wondering how she's doing. Unaware that he's fixated. He's fixated, isn't he? That's so rough and so bad for Hayase. She deserves better. She deserves better. Kaifun is going off. She'll continue to sing her songs for you, not for those unforgivable fools in the military who made such a mess of Earth. Kaifun is still on his bullshit. It's not even much to, to note about it. It's just worse and more vitriolic and less founded in reality. It makes less sense. 
We must continue rebuilding, but don't take those handouts. They're demeaning, degrading. This feels like a pretty small con. I guess she's going city to city and the cities are all small. So she begins to sing a song about giving up on that flighty boy. <sighs> something something nature reclamation project things spread more than we expect i wonder that feels like there's intended to be a lot of metaphor here i thought it was something about love blowing out or like humanity spreading but maybe it's about seeds of violence spreading that's the idea that i maybe get the idea that there's a nature reclamation project reserve like a location where we're keeping all the nature and trying to reclaim it and it expands out further than we can control has some relevance maybe to the zentradi conflict that's currently occurring i could see that as a bit of a stretched metaphor all right guys later i'm gonna peace out from my mission and head off to grande city which is a freaking pickle ship embedded in the in the earth which is awesome we run to the back of the crowd to see Min May performing. <sighs> what was what was this? Why did these guys both stop? Was that because a cutie walked by them? Is that what just happened? Was it because this blonde cutie walked past them? Do 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 do. Huh? He's got his tongue out. <gasps> Dumbasses. <laughs> I am so thrilled that they have had babies. <laughs> this is so good. So good. I am so not thrilled that she sees bad stuff. Minmei has sincerely matured. She is thoughtful and observant. And aware of Kaifun and wary of him in a way that she was not before. I really, really like this because, well... I think that, that the roman romance is falling apart is fucked and it sucks, but, but, if we're going to build a potential relationship now, or a reconnection between Hikaru and Minmei, there were two things that really fucked their days up. One was Hikaru being a dweeb and not getting it and not saying what he feels or thinks. And the other being that Minmei was really immature and didn't understand what was going on, or like, recognize the way that feelings were being thrown around. Minmei seems far more mature now. Far more self-sufficient and capable and thoughtful. Like, fully a, a young woman, not a little girl. That opens up the, that opens up the field a little bit. Kaifun has lost it. Like someone who doesn't have a reason for their rage just spiraling deeper into it, doubling down every time, convincing themselves that, no, no, my feelings are obviously justified by something, because otherwise I wouldn't feel them. I'll never forgive them. And then, coupled to it, is this awful uh, leeching, this mooching behavior, this entitlement all those people in this city and all they could afford, all, uh, not even all they could afford to give us, all they were willing to give us because they're holding out on us, right? Was fucking lettuce and soap. It's like, dude, you're in the post-apocalypse. That shit is somebody's livelihood and they had the good grace to, to offer it to you. But even beyond that, Minmei says, that's not even the point, bro. What are you talking about, Kaifun? I was singing... Without, you know, without a anything in return well before this and doing it for a different reason. I'm trying to hold this, this planet together, you know? But on his side, it's like, Kaifun's not going to have a way to eat if you're not making money, is he? No, no. So he's a leech manager now who's just riding on Minmei's coattails and has been for the entire time. He's been totally useless, right? Unwilling to fight. Totally doesn't have any other useful skills. His only useful skill is fighting. <laughs> and being handsome. He's handsome and he can fight. And he hates fighting. And, and despises the military. Awful. You're a pro. You don't sing for free. More like, if you sing for free, I won't get what I need. 
You were the one who told me to sing to keep everyone's spirits high. This isn't right. Something's wrong with you. And then there's the line. It's for our livelihood. What's wrong with being compensated? You should be thankful even for this. Ha <laughs> ha! For the military's handouts? Everything is his enemy. It's just awful. All right, fine. We're going somewhere else, but we're not going to Macross City. Just back and forth. Maybe we should take a break. I think throwing up a glass bottle and kicking it into sharded pieces just to show how angry you are, and then kicking those pieces at your girlfriend slash cousin slash slash uh, person you're managing is f f ridiculous. <sighs> They at least deserve more praise than you. They're working hard to make the Earth the way it's used to be. Yeah, but they're responsible for it. All right, fuck off, man. I'm gonna go to the. I'm gonna go to Macross City. He kicks a full boulder apart. <laughs> There's something amazing about a character that you hate just losing their shit and breaking his foot on a rock. <laughs> I wish. I wish. And then flip two, there's another major conflict going on. Zentradi are stealing weaponry and going ape shit. Why? Probably because they're being treated like second class citizens. Right? Like like laborers, giant laborers, that seems what's like what's going on here. But also because they are from a society that lived entirely in war and you took it all away from them, and they're not pleased with that. I love I love this little scene. I don't know why. This little scene where Hayase goes over to the closet and gets her stuff out and starts to take her shirt off is really cool. It's intimate. Um, and not in... Not, I joked and said, oh, service. It's not really fan service, but it is intimate. It's neat. This is not neat. These Centrati are fucking shit up. It looks okay. I think that the characters throughout this episode look great. They look so crisp. Um, the fighting stuff is fine, but I can take it or leave it, honestly. Hayase is rough. Vanessa got a promotion, which is cool for her. And we go in and 1v3 a squad of Zentradi. And face down our girlfriend who hits us with some really... Really pointed questions. Why didn't you talk to her? And then hands him an envelope full of pictures of her. Which is so cute and so not what I thought she was going to do. I thought it was going to be an awful breakup letter. And instead, it's just like a plead. Like a, a, a pleading, desperate request to be adored. Like, Please love me. And my heart just shatters. Because Hayase super deserves it. And he can't get his head off of Minme. This is next level on the romantic interpersonal relationship love triangle front in a way that I absolutely did not expect. I didn't expect any of this, but man, I really didn't expect this love triangle to rebuild. <gasps> Flipped over poster. He doesn't even really figure it out yet. Maybe he'll figure it out. I hope he figures it out. Both of those wonderful girls deserve wonderful people in their lives who actually respect them and love them for who they are. Not Kaifun. And if Hikaru isn't going to be there in the way that Hayase needs, isn't going to be there wholeheartedly for her, not that either. Wild. Two year time skip. <laughs> After the destruction of everything and the solving of. It's really quite perfect. I didn't know what we could do, and this works. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that this works. It's not going to... I don't think it's going to evolve into, like, a grand universe-scale conflict to, to rival the giant climax that we had in the last couple of episodes, but rebuilding and building these ties of community between species that have been raised so deeply differently and building these ties of romance and love between our individual characters is really cool. It really works. And there's even a, a tie or a parallel there, building connection interpersonally and building connection societally 
at the same time, these things could be orchestrated to line up in a really compelling way. And I think I trust that this show is going to be able to do it. So I will say thank you very much for watching this week's episode of Super Dimension Fortress Macross. I hope you enjoyed it anywhere near as much as I did, and I hope to catch you next week for the next one. Much love. Peace.